I'm in an old mausoleum in Romania this week, and I want to be discussing with you to bracket or not to bracket. Do we select three, do we select five, or do we not even need to expose your bracket at all? All that and more this week. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this, this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK that is now based in Istanbul. I love shooting heritage, abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. You can catch my content weekly, well, when life doesn't take over. So why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing and you can also check out my website in the description below. In this particular field of interior photography, lighting presents a significant challenge, especially if you aren't taking lighting equipment with you. You will find that spaces often have extreme contrasts between shadows and highlights. Exposure bracketing serves as a solution to this, enabling photographers to merge these varied exposures seamlessly in post-processing. And the result is captivating images that display a full spectrum of tones and textures, breathing life into architecture and interior images. The exposure bracketing ensures that both the delicate details of the highlights and of course the shadows shines vibrantly in a final shot, a kind of dance between the light and the shadow. By guaranteeing that no detail is overlooked, photographers also have the freedom to craft images that convey depth and authenticity, embracing the viewer's experience. Exposure bracketing correctly can give them the ability also to apply style to the combined TIFF file. But knowing when to do it in architecture photography and knowing how to do it, how many brackets to shoot and of course where to start are usually the issues photographers face. In this video, we look at when to do it and how to determine the number of brackets. For those of you who have not seen my video before on the channel, I'll link it above here, all about breaking down the exposure bracketing. But the key concept is you're getting multiple exposures of the same scene at different brightness levels. So that would be a darker one, for example, a brighter one, and one exactly where you've exposed. In architecture photography, that's pretty normal. And I walk into scenes time and time again and have to do it. But whether you need to do it or not really is a topic depending on your camera, the age of your camera, your camera's dynamic range, and of course, the scene you're walking into. And in this week's video, I'm gonna sort of break it down here in this mausoleum because it's pretty difficult. There's some top-down lighting, but it's beautiful, but it's very dark here at the bottom. Okay, so what are the advantages of bracketing a scene? Well, first of all, it would give you a much broader, wider dynamic range. So exposure bracketing can kind of alleviate your photography from being kind of mediocre to amazing. And the reason for that is if you've got a scene that's got huge dynamic range, bright highlights, dark shadows, Exposure bracketing along the way can really alleviate that photography and actually push it on because what you're doing is you're extending the camera's dynamic range. Even modern cameras now can't see the full dynamic range our eyes can see yet. However, it's coming a long, long way. So it all depends on the age of your camera. But if you've got an older camera, exposure bracketing and blending those together in post is going to give you the best results. Even in modern cameras, there is always a scene you'll walk into that requires this technique and its advantages are that you're gonna get different results, fresher results, and also be able to apply a style to those edits because you're gonna have a nicer baseline to work off. So if you walk into a scene like I have here in this mausoleum and it's high contrast, you're gonna to need to know about exposure bracketing and how to perform it. And not just to perform it, but how to select the right settings and also select it in camera to get great results. Every scene is different and it's never gonna work out exactly the same every time. But having that kind of foundation and experience walking into a new setting is gonna help you along the way. How do we choose between three, five, or even more brackets than this? How do we know to expose a bracket at all? Well, it all depends on a number of factors. So I'm gonna give you some things to consider as to whether you should expose a bracket at all, use three or five exposure brackets. If your camera has a limited dynamic range, then you might want to consider doing more exposure brackets because this can help you preserve the details in the highlights and the shadows, and it will save you having to lift up those shadows too much in post-production. Also, as you progress and you start to apply style to your photography, having a flatter 
starting point will give you a much better chance of applying that, that style or color grade to the images. So getting a flatter starting point would mean that you'd need a greater dynamic range, meaning you might have to shoot more brackets. So when you walk in, you need to assess the scene's dynamic range. Is there extreme highlights? Is there deep, deep shadows? In which case, you may well benefit from capturing three or five brackets on location. It'll also help you capture those finer details in the highlights and the shadows. A camera with one exposure set might not necessarily be able to pull out those details, even if it is one of the modern new cameras. I usually start on my brightest bracket and work back from there, or at least dial in the brightest bracket. Not all cameras shoot the brightest back bracket first. Mine usually goes for the middle one and then does brightest and then darkest. And then that leads me on finally to scene complexity. More complex scenes might have intricate and delicate details. There might also be interesting elements in the space reflections, marble, there might be multiple windows, or in case here, there's light above us and nothing down below, as I've mentioned. Ultimately, there's no strict rule. It's all about finding the balance and finding what works. As usual with this photography, it's trial and error and practice makes perfect. And of course, knowledge over time just builds and you walk into a scene for the first time and you start to be able to assess it pretty quickly. It also boils down to like your workflow. Even if the scene is really complex, you might end up with a workflow that you actually like just pulling up the shadows and relying on blown out highlights as part of your, you know, your look, your feel, in which case it's absolutely fine. As there might be other times where actually you like the dark and moody feel, in which case you may want less exposure brackets as well. So the disadvantage really to bracketing is exposure times. It can increase your exposure times massively. And if you're limited to time on site, you really need to think about what you're selecting and which settings. However, the advantages of exposure bracketing do outweigh raising your ISO a little bit. So don't be frightened to raise a little bit and then exposure bracket is still gonna get you better results overall and gonna give you a better chance of getting a usable image. However, do bear in mind if you're constantly out photographing, shooting more and more brackets means more storage space, more wear and tear on your computer, more wear and tear on your hard drives. So the final tip I'll give you as well is it depends on your shot selection. For me, I'm looking to go into that door area there and that's gonna to lead to a very dark foreground, but it might help me with my highlights above because it might block out some of that light. Let's have a look. So in this video, I'm using primarily my Canon R5 and my 17mm tilt shift lens with the adapter. I've done a gear video recently and all about the different gear that I use is linked above here. I'm not gonna discuss the in-depth of all my gear in this video. But I am using the R5 with that 17mm for these shots. So my final shot isn't going to be this shot. This is going to be a 17mm wide angle shot showing a little bit of the top and a bit of the bottom. But there is quite a large dynamic range in there. There's bright highlights above, as I mentioned, and down below it's quite dark and moody. I've lined it up and what I'm going to do is I'm going to determine whether I need exposure brackets with my first shot. So. ISO 100, F8, I'm focusing on one of the details around about, I don't know, uh, 90 centimeters or so into the scene. Everything should be nice and sharp. I've lined up everything nice and straight and I'm gonna take that shot. Okay, that's four second exposure. Now, let's have a look at this. To be honest with you, it's usable. If my style of editing allowed for it, you could get away with this. The issue areas are bright highlight at the top, which just is a bit distracting, and some very dark corners, bottom left and right. So it depends on your look and feel of your final result. So to me, I would be better suited if I actually selected three brackets. So that's what I'm going to look to do. What I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to go to my exposure bracketing. And for me, you press info, you, print, you select, you go into uh, your exposure settings. And I'm actually going to go for um, three brackets, one stop apart to start with. And we're going to, we're going to try that one. Same thing, let's take that shot. I 
and we're just going to look through those three and you can see on there the difference so this was our base exposure then we have our darker one for the highlights at the top and finally we have our overexposed image it gives us a little bit of detail in that shadow so one stop apart in here that would be absolutely fine so in this current time of day current time of the year actually and with this current shot selection we've determined that we can actually photograph this one stop apart three brackets and that would cover a really nice amount of dynamic range in the scene however things are going to change dramatically as i ramp it up and start to photograph a panoramic for example and i'm going to have extreme shifts of light from top to bottom i'll pop that image on the screen however it's not going to be my final result we're going to get one more in here I might even have to push together these as well give myself as much height as possible it's a pretty tall building and I'm just doing my basic framing first of all and we talked about framing on the channel before okay so this is what I'm pretty much looking at for myself and you can see as I shift up I'm using a tilt shift lens but look at the difference between the top section. That's the top frame. The middle one, which is much more ambient. And then finally, look at the shadows area. There's a huge difference here in my scene. Same thing applies though, same rules. I'm gonna basically expose a bracket. But the thing is the lens here is also uh, losing light as I'm shifting it around. So I know that I can trust the middle exposure and that's what I'm going to do. This guy keeps freaking me out every time I'm like setting up my gear or sorting something out. He catches my eyes, little white lights, his little brightness keeps catching my eyes. And I keep thinking it's a person and of course it's not. Freaky. Anyway, it's been a great location. I'm gonna put all my images on the screen, some examples for you as well from what I've just been capturing in here. It's been a challenge, but it's been fun. If you've got any comments, leave them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can. The other thing, have you checked out the numbers area yet? It launched a few days ago and it's been getting great feedback. The idea of it is to put exclusive videos in there as well as series that I've blocked a long time ago on the channel and also to give much more access, the drama, the behind the scenes, and of course talk about locations much more than I can do on this channel at the moment. From Romania, until next time, see you all very soon.